Hey, it's Mason from MH Wedding Films, and today I'm going to take you through and show you my camera bag and the gear I'll be using for the year 2022. I'll show you kind of the audio gear I'm using, lighting, cameras, uh, and maybe a couple of quick little small pieces of gear that I have that make my life a little bit easier for when I'm filming weddings. If you are already in the wedding industry as a photographer or a filmmaker, you understand how fast-paced weddings are, and if you're just getting in, it's great to kind of understand that weddings are a very, very fast-paced work environment, so having gear that's going to work for those types of situations is definitely key to have. I do think that when you're looking at gear, you want to focus on low light sensitivity, uh, battery life, and having a camera with good stabilization. Um, and if you aren't going to have a camera that has stabilization, I'll show you a couple of pieces of gear that will help you with that. But yeah, let's go and take a look at my camera bag and we will go from there. <laughs> Okay, so starting with the camera, this is the GH5S from Panasonic. This is definitely one of the best cameras that I've found for wedding filmmaking. The low light capabilities in this camera are insane. That's the main point we're gonna start with here. And you can see in these shots, like I have my ISO absolutely cranked up and it's nice and clean. You're not getting super noisy images. You're not getting any kind of color shifts. This shot I used a uh, light to light the first dance and that's kind of helping them stand out without having to absolutely crank my ISO. But I am still using a higher ISO just because this is a darker reception space which is extremely common at weddings. Up next, this camera offers dual native ISO which is an incredibly useful feature especially at weddings. So basically what that means is your native ISO is 400 but you also have a native ISO of 2500. And that means when you go from 400 to 2500, the camera sensor resets and it avoids any kind of uh, noise or any kind of artifacts in your image. Next, we have Synchro Scan. This is definitely one of the more underrated features. It basically allows you to match the flicker that a light produces. So if you have a light that's creating, you know, flickering, it makes banding or rolling black bars. This actually allows you to dial in your shutter speed to match the light's flicker so that you don't have those black bars. So here you can see what I mean by banding. So you can see those rolling black bars. Sometimes they're fast, sometimes they're small, sometimes they're big. Uh, it really depends on where your shutter speed is set. But with the synchro scan feature, you can dial in your shutter speed again here so that you can actually match that and completely remove those black bars. And finally, this is definitely an affordable camera. Uh, these cameras don't, you know, break the bank or wreck the budget these are reasonable price the lens is a reasonable price it's a micro four-thirds system and yeah i definitely recommend it for any wedding filmmakers starting out so i should mention that currently i am using one sony a6500 as a b camera uh, i'm gonna upgrade that to another gh5s and make two gh5s as my b cameras and then upgrade my main camera to a gh6 or sony fx3 I'll definitely say the Sony a6500 was a great camera to start with for anyone that is starting out. Uh, it does have some issues like 30 minute record lengths, but honestly, if you're just starting out, I would definitely suggest this or the a6400 as a camera to use when you start out. I'd get a small rig cage for it and maybe like a 50 mil lens if you're gonna use it as a B camera. Okay, so let's take a look at lenses now. This is the Olympus 45mm, it's f1.8. It's a really great B camera option. It's small, easy to pack into your camera bag, and it's really good for getting those tight shots in a reception or ceremony between the bride and groom. Next up, we have the DJI Mavic Pro 2. Drones have become very popular for wedding filmmakers and couples wanna see that. I guarantee you they're gonna ask you if you have a drone. Definitely recommend getting something that can shoot 4K footage. Recommend getting licensed and insurance for it because some venues will ask you for that. And yeah, they just add that cinematic touch that everyone wants to see at their wedding. I will say that I don't normally use my drone to film the couple unless it's something super special like this next shot. What I actually use it for is mostly to establish where they are or show off the venue or location, colors, if it's fall, the trees. And the next thing goes hand in hand with the drone and that is the DJI smart controller. I definitely recommend having a designated controller for your drone using your cell phone. I've been there. I've done that. 
it is not great because if your cell phone has weak battery or bad connection and you're struggling trying to connect with it, it's a nightmare. This is a super crystal clear image and you can see exactly what you're filming. There's no concerns of, am I missing the shot or what am I actually getting? So I definitely recommend it. So next we're gonna go over some audio gear. These labs are the Tascam DR10Ls and those are honestly great for what we need as wedding filmmakers. They're affordable, they're small. You can put whatever kind of mic you actually want on it if you wanna have a better signal, but the stock one that comes with it is great. They're really nice to just kind of hide with the groom and use as a backup recorder or even a main one if you don't have something that you can connect your zoom to. Next up we have the ND filters and specifically I'm using the Polar Pro Peter McKinnon edition. And this is a 2-5 to five stop variable ND filter. ND filters help you keep your shutter speed at the 180 rule so that you can maintain that cinematic motion blur. What it allows you to do is keep your shutter speed double what your frame rate is, which is what you're supposed to do instead of adjusting your shutter speed. So say you're shooting at 24 frames per second, your shutter speed should be 1 over 50. Rather than adjusting your shutter to be like 200 whatever to keep it exposed properly, your ND filter helps you keep proper exposure while maintaining proper motion blur. The same thing applies for if you're filming with a drone or really any camera. Uh, you need to make sure that if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, try to keep your shutter speed at 1 over 50. These are the Polar Pro Shutter Collection ND filters, and these range from ND4 to ND16. Okay, so the next thing that I have that uh, we definitely need to talk about and is super important is batteries and lots of batteries. Uh, I definitely cannot stress how important it is to have a lot of batteries and have chargers for them because if you start running out of battery life and you're in a pinch, you're in big trouble. Definitely recommend these Amazon uh, AA and AAA batteries. They're rechargeable and great for your uh, labs and anything that takes uh, a battery type. Uh, and definitely have lots of backups for your main cameras, your backup cameras, and everything else. So this is another important thing. Uh, this is a small HD 702 touch. And when I started, I didn't have an external monitor, but once I got one, you really appreciate how important it is to have one. Uh, being able to see that everything's exposed correctly and that your couples are in focus, especially because well, I'm using manual focus 24 seven, I don't use autofocus at all. Uh, being able to actually see what's going on is super important. Having these dual uh, battery slots too just makes my life a lot easier that I don't have to worry too much about running out of batteries quickly. And I always have backups charged and ready to go for when the time comes that I do need to flip them. And next up, uh, we have the DJI Rodin S. This is a gimbal, obviously, to stabilize my camera. The GH5S doesn't have in-body stabilization. So for my camera specifically, this is super important. Um, it's a bit on the heavier side to use 24 seven. So if you can find a camera that has great IBIS, I would definitely recommend that if you can avoid using a gimbal. But I mean, if you don't have good IBIS, it is important to have really good stabilization. And I would definitely recommend this option. Throughout the video, you've probably been seeing these Zune quick release plates. And honestly, I think this is one of the most underrated tools. What they do is you can screw them into anything you have and there's a receiving end and the opposite end goes on like your camera or whatever and you basically just screw them on, clip it in and leave it and you're good to go. This is really great on a wedding day because of how quick paced weddings are. Uh, it's nice to have something that you can just snap in, snap out and it's on all my gear so it's quick. And finally, just one thing I thought I'd mention is having a little toolkit like this that has your screwdrivers or something that you can kind of screw your base plates into rather than using like a nickel is definitely important to have. It makes your life a lot easier and it's just one last thing to have to worry about on a wedding shoot. And finally, you want to have a case that can hold all your gear. Definitely recommend one of these Pelican cases. They're water resistant and it's coming quite a few times handy for me on a wedding day when it starts raining. It holds all my gear, it's got a lot of space, it's got rolling wheels on it and definitely recommend it for anyone that is looking for a carrying case of some kind. It's been a game changer for me and just like I said, it's one less thing to have to worry about. 
So that's my camera bag for 2022. If you're using any other gear and it's working for you, please mention it in the comments. I uh, love sharing this information with everyone. I think it's great for anyone that's starting out in the wedding industry to know. And while you're down there, if you want to subscribe to this channel, I'll be posting new content weekly from highlight films to wedding tips and just special moments throughout the wedding year. Let me know if you found this video helpful. Leave a like and subscribe below and I'll see you next time.